Good afternoon. Congratulations on the 20th anniversary of the UK Japan Winter School. Since 1999, the school has provided excellent opportunity for Japanese and UK scientists, in particular, young researchers and students in mathematics and mathematical physics, to meet and discuss in a relaxing and stimulating atmosphere. I myself was invited to give a set of lectures on topological string theory 10 years ago in Oxford, and I enjoyed it very much. I will show you one of the photos I took on the occasion later in my lecture. I'm sorry that I'm not able to attend this celebration in person, but I'm glad to be able to deliver this lecture in this way. I'm grateful to the Embassy of Japan and Professor Maeda to make this possible. The purpose of my lecture today is to introduce you this movie, The Man from the Nine Dimensions, which I helped to produce at Miraikan, one of the science museums in Tokyo. It is an adventure story of a group of scientists chasing after the man from the nine dimensions, who takes us to the microscopic world of elementary particles, to the macroscopic world of the universe, and to its beginning, the Big Bang. We made this movie so that it can be enjoyed by people with diverse backgrounds, but it can be enjoyed more if you know a bit on its scientific background. To explain it is the purpose of this lecture. So, let's begin. So one of the mission of physics, I'm one of the physicists, is to discover the fundamental laws of nature and to use them to solve some of its deepest mystery of the universe, such as its origin and the future. Since ancient times, humans have been interested in finding out how the universe began and how it works and what a place is in it. And for example, many religions in various parts of the world were developed uh, in order to address such fundamental questions. Four centuries ago, Galileo Galilei pointed his telescope at night sky and opened a new window to the universe. It opened a new way to understand the universe that is by scientific method. His discovery initiated the scientific revolution and enabled us to address some of the mystery of the universe by scientific method. And so I'd like to explain some of the latest knowledge uh, we have gained from this approach. And, and then we are going to translate that into the movie. In fact, uh, uh, for the last 400 years, we have made remarkable success in deciphering the universe. And the progress is continuing very strongly. Just last month, for example, the uh, James Webb Space Telescope unveiled the first set of images, and here is a President Biden of the United States actually celebrate this occasion, celebrating this occasion. So I myself have written eight popular science books in Japanese, and to communicate some of the recent excitement in this area. Uh, in this book, uh, so I explained uh, some of our understanding of about gravity. And this is about the theory of elementary particles. And this is a sup about superstring theory that goes beyond the standard model of particle physics. I will tell you a little bit about that later. And in fact, this has been, this has been well received. Uh, it sold over 300,000 copies in Japan and translated into Chinese and Korean. And one of the books received the Science Book Prize uh, in Japan. So this is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kodoporos, of, uh, uh, who was working at that time the Miraikan, one of the science museums in Tokyo. He approached me uh, uh, nine years ago and told me that, uh, well, he read one of my books and he was very excited and he wanted to make a 3D dome theater movie based on this book and he asked me whether I can help. I was initially uh, skeptical of whether my book can be made into 30 minutes movie but I was persuaded by his uh, enthusiasm. And this is a group of people, uh, some of the uh, people that uh, the, the he and his team put together. So we are very pleased to have retained the uh, help of this uh, uh, amazing movie director. Uh, he's actually a horror movie director, but he has amazing visual ima images that you'll see in the movie. And this is Mr. Yamamoto. Uh, he is actually a very skillful uh, graphic designer and a computer animator. And you'll see his work in the movie. 
And here is your science guy, that's me. So the, this uh, resulting science movie called The Man from Di Nine Dimensions, uh, we are delighted that as soon as it debuted in Tokyo in 2016, it received the Best Educational Production Award from the International Planetarium Society. It is the highest award of the society the society only gives in every other year. And it has been translated into, into six foreign languages and have shown all over the world. This is when I actually showed the German version uh, at Hamburg Planetarium. Uh, here is me. Uh, sitting next to me is the uh, uh, Education Minister of the State of Hamburg. And uh, this, I believe, is taken at uh, Bangalore in India. Uh, I showed this movie together with my public lecture both in Bangalore and Mumbai. So the movie actually made the uh, Bollywood debut. So now I'd like to explain the science behind this movie so that when you see this movie after my lecture, this lecture, uh, you can sort of understand uh, what's the science behind uh, this movie. So we now understand that the universe was born 13.8 billion years ago. This is actually amazing knowledge that we understand the age of the universe in three decimal places. When I was a grad student, astronomers were debating whether the universe is 10 billion years old or 20 billion years old. So knowing the, the age of the universe in three decimal places is amazing. That shows uh, how much we have made progress in the accurate measurement of some of the property of, of the universe. The story started uh, uh, now 1915, when Einstein completed his theory of gravity. This made it possible to study the evolution of the universe uh, in scientific way. And in fact, uh, Einstein, as soon as he developed his theory of general relativity, applied it to the whole universe. And then by solving his gravitational equation, he found that the universe must be expanding or contracting. But he somehow, for some reason, uh, thought that this is not consistent with his intuition about the universe, and he abandoned the solution. That was a mistake, because uh, uh, 14 years later, uh, Edwin Hubble at Mount Wilson Observatory discovered that the universe is expanding. In fact, the Mount Wilson Observatory is located in the city of Pasadena, California, where my office is located, and in fact, we can see the Mount Wilson Observatory from my office. And this is Einstein visiting the Mount Wilson Observatory. And in the same year, uh, Einstein actually gave a set of lectures in Oxford. And this, it, it actually, the, the Oxford University still preserved the blackboard that Einstein used on that occasion. And this is actually a photo I took when I uh, uh, visited Oxford University about 10 years ago to give a set of lectures at the uh, UK, Japan uh, Winter School. And uh, uh, so if you look at this uh, uh, blackboard, you see that Einstein is actually explaining how the universe expands based on his equation. So in fact, uh, he changed his mind after seeing the observation at Mount Wilson. So there are lots of evidences by now that uh, the big uh, universe is expanding. And so that means that if you go back in the history of the universe, there must have been a time when the universe was very hot and dense. And that is called the Big Bang. And Big Bang theory make various predictions that can be tested experimentally. This is one of the first important ones. That, uh, that at the very beginning of the universe, the universe was very hot and dense. So that means that atoms de was decomposed into elementary particles. And then around three, three minutes after the birth of the universe, the universe has cooled down sufficiently so that protons and neutrons combine to make hydrogen and helium nuclei. And using Big Bang theory, you can actually predict the ratio to be 12 to 1. This calculation was done by George Gamow and his collaborator immediately after the World War II. And their prediction agreed precisely with our current astrophysical observation about the ratio of hydrogen and helium. So this is actually very strong evidence for the Big Bang theory. The universe cooled down further. At that time, three, three minutes after the birth of the universe, hydrogen and helium nuclei were still sort of uh, separated from electrons, so there are like ions all over in the universe. So the light could not propagate straight. But 
after 400,000 years, uh, the universe cooled down sufficiently at low temperature so that the electron and the atomic nuclei combined to form neutral atoms. So the, now the light can propagate straight in the universe. So we can actually observe this first light from the universe, the primordial light. It was observed in 1964 by Penzias and Wilson, and he was, they were awarded the Nobel Prize for their discovery. So this is another evidence for the Big Bang theory that the, the, the primordial light emitted 400,000 years after the birth of the universe had been detected. And the universe continued to expand after that. The, the everything is made of neutral atoms. There are no stars. So that might mean that there are no light had been emitted after that, and star and galaxy were still to be born. So the universe was very dark and boring place. And this period is called dark age of the universe. By the way, uh, these kind of images I will show you uh, are based uh, from the movie. So you will see those images. When, so when you see those images uh, at the movie, uh, you please remember what I was, I'm telling you right now. So there was this uh, dark age of the universe about 100 million years after the birth of the universe. But historian tells us that there were also dark ages in Europe, but dark ages were not necessarily boring time, and there are a lot of things that happened that, was, that prepared the rebirth of civilization at the Renaissance. And similar things happened in the universe. So even during this uh, dark age of the universe, the seed for the stars and the galaxy were sort of uh, uh, made. Because atoms scattered in the Big Bang began to come together by gravity. And uh, once things start to gather, the gravity attracts more matters, and then they eventually they become stars and galaxies. And the first star was born about uh, 100 million years after the birth of the universe. And in fact, the James Webb Space Telescope that I showed you some of the first images earlier is supposed to observe and study those, uh, some of the, those first stars and galaxies. That's one of the things that this space telescope is supposed to do. And a billion years after the Big Bang, the galaxies start forming. By the way, these images are just not just made up. They are based on the accurate scientific theory. So we have, in, when we made this movie, we collaborated with the illustrious project. It is actually the uh, collaboration of Harvard University, MIT, and many other universities about uh, uh, cosmological simulation of galaxy formations using the state-of-the-art numerical code. And we have been able to get their uh, help to translate their scientific uh, model into the uh, movie images. So that's what you'll see in the movie. And about 9 billion years after the Big Bang, finally the Sun and Earth formed. And so the Earth is supposed to have formed 4.5 billion years ago, and then life emerges 3.5 billion uh, years ago. And then so it has gradually uh, evolved from microbe to Homo sapiens after that. So it took a long time for the uh, life to evolve into intelligent being, intelligent enough to ask how does the universe work. So this is a sort of amazing story that the uh, universe is such a place so that uh, we are able to sort of ask this kind of question. So why is the universe the way it is? How did it come to the existence? So Mubi is trying to uh, discuss some of these fundamental questions. So to address that, let's go back to the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang. So this is another image of the Big Bang in the movie. So as I told you, that three minutes after the birth of the universe, the protons and neutrons combine to make hydrogen and helium atoms, and that prediction has been verified experimentally and numerically, quantitative. But if you go back to the history of the universe to the much earlier time, the universe was even more hot and dense. So even the proton and neutron can be dissolved, were well, dissolved into more elementary particles called quarks. So in the movie, you see this uh, image. So these are protons and neutrons. They are made of three quarks, and you see three quarks inside of the protons and neutrons. That was uh, the state of the universe at about 0.001 second after the burst. 
We can even go back to the uh, uh, earlier time of the universe uh, in scientific method, because we have what is now called the standard model of particle physics that has been verified by ex uh, experiment. And this is actually the late, uh, best understanding of microscopic world verified by experiment. And using this theory, uh, we can actually describe the universe at uh, 0 0.00000000000. That's uh, 10 zeros after the decimal places, 0.1, uh, uh, one second after the burst. So, so we can, we can, we can use this theory. So there are 17 different elementary particles in this theory. And in the movie, uh, we'll show, we introduce you some of these elementary particles on this table. One of our favorite particles is neutrino because Japanese scientists have has made a lot of contribution in understanding this elementary particle. In fact, two Nobel Prize have been awarded for Japanese scientists, Koshiba and Kajita, who is shown here. Uh, for their study of uh, 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 neutrinos. And uh, one of the property of new, interesting property of neutrinos is called neutrino oscillation. It changes the type of neutrino as it flies. And we try to show that in the movie. Uh, in the movie, you see that uh, neutrinos are flying down, are coming down from the ceiling and then changes the color and it's supposed to represent the neutrino oscillation. The photon, which is uh, uh, a pointer, which mediate the electric and the magnetic forces are also shown uh, in the movie in this way. And then finally the Higgs boson, the last of 17 elementary particles in the standard model of particle physics, uh, discovered at CERN 10 years ago, uh, July, uh, announced July, uh, 4th of July uh, 2012, I believe. And uh, here is Peter Fix uh, receiving a uh, Nobel Prize uh, for his prediction of the Higgs boson. So, we can use this standard model of particle physics to accurately describe the universe to such early age. But scientists continue to be curious, and we ask how the universe was like before uh, this time. And in fact, uh, 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 to answer this question, we need more fundamental theories that goes beyond the standard model of particle physics. And there are reasons to think that standard model is not complete. For example, uh, we can only explain the 4% in terms of the energy of the universe by using uh, a standard model of particle physics. Uh, we now know that the universe has, there is a large uh, a component of the universe called dark matter. There are like five times more dark matter than ordinary matters uh, that we don't know what they are made of. And there is also even mysterious energy called dark energy, which uh, 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 energy, which is responsible for the accelerated expansion of the universe. So there are many things we don't understand about the universe just using standard model particle physics and general relativity. So clearly, that, uh, we need to understand uh, more uh, to, under uh, to solve some of the mystery of the universe. And that includes the state of the universe uh, before this time. There are some uh, 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 proposal of how the universe was like before that. For example, there is a theory called the cosmic inflation. And uh, if you use that, it can explain the universe. I can't read out the, the zeros. There are like 35 zeros after the decimal place. And you, if you use this inflation theory, which uh, 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 postulate that there was a period of the early universe where the universe expanded exponentially. And uh, then you, it can explain various uh, uh, things uh, that I will tell you about. Uh, this is one of the images we used to represent the inflation in the movie. And during this inflation period, uh, uh, it is expected that force and matters, even space and time of the universe, are fluctuating according to the law of quantum mechanics. We, in the movie, we try to explain some of the features of quantum mechanics using this kind of images. And if you combine general relativity and quantum mechanics and apply that to the inflation period, then it can make, we can make predictions. For example, Stephen Hawking and his collaborator predicted using quantum mechanics and general relativity and apply that to the inflation universe, predicted that quantum fluctuation of force and matter and space-time in our universe can be observed in the primordial light, in terms of fluctuation of the primordial light. 
And in fact, it has been observed in this way with increasing accuracy, the first observation have received the Nobel Prize. And these fluctuations are very important because it's supposed to be the seed of uh, stars and galaxies of the universe. I told you uh, earlier that uh, the universe uh, went through these dark ages, but eventually there was some kind of clump of matters, and that started to attract uh, more matters, and eventually the star was born. But you can ask, how does this clump emerge? So if the universe is completely uniform, how does that kind of things appear? And uh, this primordial fluctuation can, in principle, explain where that seed came from. So this is very important uh, part of the evolution of the universe. And we are trying to understand it better. So, for example, the uh, Cabri IPMU at the University of Tokyo, of which I'm the director of, uh, is uh, uh, planning to launch a satellite, uh, scientific satellite, uh, during this decade in collaboration with JAX and KK to get more data, much better data about the primordial light, which can shed light on and possibly uh, uh, verify the prediction of inflation cosmology. There are other windows into the universe, the gravitational wave is another window for which the Nobel Prize has been awarded. But to understand the early universe, for example, the cosmic inflation is a scenario, but it has not been derived from fundamental theory. And to understand the early universe, we need a more fundamental theory that unifies the microscopic world of gravity with the microscopic world of quantum mechanics. And the only consistent way we know how to do this is superstring theory. Some of us study this theory because of this motivation. And superstring theory postulates the fundamental building blocks are not point particle, but strings. And it also postulates that the space that theory is defined is nine dimension plus one time. So that's actually the, the, the origin of the name, the man from the nine dimension for the movie. But we live in three spatial dimensions and one time. So what happened to the difference between nine and three? And the superstring theory postulates that, in fact, this extra six dimension is a small, compact, caravial manifold. It's a particular type of geometry that is not visible to us directly, but plays a very important role. For example, the rich structure of elementary particles, such as 17 type of elementary particles, the gauge forces, and Higgs boson, all emerges from the geometry of Karabiao. So we need to study the geometry of Karabiao in order to derive property of elementary particles from this fundamental theory. So this is what we want to do, and that's one of the things actually I, I explained during my set of lectures uh, at the UK, Japan Winter School 10 years ago. But we need to develop this mathematical theory much more because we don't even know how to measure the distance between two points of Karabiao manifold. So if we don't know how to measure the distance mathematically, how can der we derive such a rich structure out of it? So we are struggling. And we need more power for mathematics. And so, so in the movie, we also demonstrate the power of mathematics in deciphering the universe. And so the man from dying dimension is in fact this metaphor of the theory of everything to combine general relativity and quantum mechanics, which unifies a microscopic, macroscopic world of gravity with a microscopic world of quantum mechanics. And this is, this, uh, uh, this movie, this adventure movie is a metaphor of a scientist's quest to discover this theory of everything and to use that to solve the fundamental mystery of the universe. So, I hope you will enjoy the movie. Thank you for listening.